All right, so if you've been following my channel at all, you probably know that the 5800X3D holds a special place in my tech-loving soul. Why? Well, it's not just about the incredible gaming performance it offers, although that's a big part of it. It's also about the value proposition it brings to the table. See, what sets the 5800X3D apart is its ability to deliver top-notch gaming performance without breaking the bank. You don't need to splurge on an expensive motherboard or super fast RAM to make the most of this chip. Thanks to the longevity of the AM4 platform, which has been going strong for eight years now, you can essentially leapfrog several generations ahead just by upgrading your CPU and leaving everything else untouched. Now let's talk about the secret sauce, 3D Vcache tech. Think of it like a turbocharger for your CPU, just as a turbo allows smaller engines to punch above their weight in terms of power and efficiency, 3D Vcache works its magic by stacking memory in a way that maximizes performance while keeping things energy efficient. Since its debut back in April 22, we've seen a slew of X3D chips hit the market, but the 5800X3D is still the OG to me. Its reign at the top, however, has been recently challenged by the newer kid on the block, the 7800X3D. Now, don't get me wrong, the 7800X3D offers even better gaming performance, but here's the dilemma I think many AM4 users are facing. While the 7800X3D might be the latest and greatest CPU there is right now, I think there's a ton of gamers out there wondering if a jump to a new motherboard and DDR5 memory is really worth it when they could simply drop in a 5700X3D or a 5800X3D for minimal cost. I mean, going to the AM5 platform might offer a lot of enticing upgrades, but it also means digging a bit deeper into your pockets. So in today's video, we're going to put these two titans head to head and see how they stack up in terms of gaming performance and gray zone warfare. Will the 5800X3D continue to hold its own against the newcomer, or is the performance gain offered by the 7800X3D really worth it to make that jump? Stick around to find out. But before we get into that, make sure to set your fire mode to auto and unload on the like and subscribe button. I also want to give a big shout out to my first Purology Pro member, Elros Games. Your support means the world to me, and I truly can't thank you enough. You've been there from the start, and I'll always remember that when I hit the big leagues. I'm committed to pushing forward until I reach my goals, and having supporters like you makes the journey all the more rewarding. So thank you again. All right, here we go. For this test, I conducted short benchmark runs both inside the Mithra space and near LZ3, close to the downed helicopter. Each system underwent three separate runs and I calculated the average numbers from each run to compare the CPUs. I ensured consistent settings by utilizing the optimal performance settings derived from my settings optimization video released earlier. I also tested in 1080, 1440, and 4K. So looking at the numbers inside the base, Somehow the 5800X3D came out on top in terms of average FPS as well as 1% FPS. Not sure how that happened. The 7800X3D draws a little less power though, so it is more efficient in terms of how much it produces. I did notice that if there were a lot of people dropping in or taking off from the base, the FPS did drop a little bit, so maybe that was the cause of it. But either way, over three runs, the 5800X3D at the base actually outperformed the 7800X3D. If anyone else has insight as to why this might have been, let me know. But I mean, it was pretty surprising for me to see. So I'm including all the footage for these runs. I'm going to stop my commentary here and let the rest of the footage play. Feel free to use the timestamp to skip ahead to each testing section. When I actually left the base and explored around LZ3, the results were more along the lines of what I expected. The 5800X3D maintained a higher 1% FPS again. Not sure how that happened, but it did over three runs. However, the average FPS and CPU FPS per 10 watts was higher with the 7800X3D at 227.6 versus 217.3, and then 35.56 for the 7800X3D and 27.51 FPS per 10 watts for the 5800X3D. Although there was a little difference in the numbers, in terms of actual game feel, they both felt pretty much exactly the same. If I didn't have the stats on the side telling me which system I was on, I probably would not be able to tell. One thing I'm noticing now is that I mistakenly selected the wrong chipset for the X670E V-Core metric. 
the correct one that's actually connected to the CPU was consistently around 1.0 to 1.1 volts during the testing. So please disregard the number you see there. That's going to just remain constant around 1.79 volts actually. When I moved up to 1440, the 7800X3D took the lead across the board. It boasted a 5.6% edge in average FPS, a 13% advantage in 1% low FPS, and an impressive 40% lead in CPU FPS per 10 watts. So despite the similar game feel between them, efficiency wise, the 7800X3D clearly stands out with its significant advantage. So for those of you focused solely on performance metrics, the numbers are quite comparable. However, if you reside in an area with high electricity costs and prioritize efficiency, then the 7800X3D definitely warrants consideration in this category. When I got out to LZ3 in 1440, the same trend continued with even smaller gaps though. There was only a 1.4% difference in average FPS, a 7.82 difference in 1% low FPS, and a 31% difference in CPU FPS per 10 watts. So again, the main difference between the two is the efficiency of each chip here, how much power is drawing for the performance you're getting. Moving on to 4K, I observed a similar pattern. FPS numbers remain closely matched. It's extremely close in actual game feel. However, there is a notable contrast in power usage efficiency. The 7800X3D led by about 5% in average FPS and 1% low FPS. However, there was a 33% difference in CPU FPS per 10 watts between the two chips. As you can see when put side by side, the 5800X3D is drawing around 75 to 80 watts, while the 7800X3D is in the low 60s in terms of power draw. Moving about around LZ3, we're seeing again the same trend. The 7800X3D leading by about 4.6% in average FPS, about 12% in 1% low FPS, and around 34% in CPU FPS per 10 watts. Another indicator of the chip's similar performance is evident in the 4090 numbers on both systems, with the GPU being equally pushed pretty much in both cases. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All right, I hope this comparison sheds some light on the differences between the 5800X3D and the 7800X3D in Grey Zone Warfare for you. While the FPS numbers remain closely matched across various resolutions offering similar gaming experiences, the significant gap in power usage efficiency is hard to ignore. Consistently, the 7800X3D proved to be around 30 to 40% more efficient across the board. For AM4 users not on an X3D platform contemplating an upgrade between these two chips, if efficiency is your priority, the 7800X3D is the clear winner. However, considering the 5800X3D's compatibility with existing AM4 setups without the need for motherboard and RAM changes, it offers better overall value in my opinion. I sincerely hope this video provided you with helpful insights. Feel free to explore more comparisons in the playlist linked in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to join my Discord community. You can find me under the username Puri, and our Purology community is steadily growing with nearly 700 users now. As always, thank you immensely for investing your valuable time here. Your support through likes, comments, and shares means everything to me as I pursue my dream of creating content full time. Each interaction is a step forward on this journey, and I'm grateful for every single one. All right, it's time for me to get back to the grind to continue to make more useful content for you guys to enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.